It's not in the cards for you. I'm pretty good at insults. And I got the internet and a lot of free time. The only thing I want to hear out of Gen Z is, do you want a girlfriend? Ultimately, I don't care. I don't care about any of your struggle because you've got a whole bunch of fucking girlfriends whenever I'm around downtown, which is all damn day. You're out there age gapping for all this time that I've been in Spokane, but I've preached it for five years over YouTube. The popular spot for Gen X, Gen Z, Silver Fox, uh, Spring, Autumn Romance is Bistango, but you leave me stranded here telling everybody that you're such a generous generation, Gen Z, but you give in to these greedy fuckboys of all generations. Bistango apparently does make a pretty good martini. They're a pretty good uh, martini bar, and I would go there to meet women, except I don't have an ID card. I, I have $50 that I got from doing one project yesterday. I do $50 a project. You know how it is. Money, power, and greed wins over the women. If you don't have money, you have greed because you have your seven girlfriends a week, Gen Z. Everywhere down here, I just see Gen Z dudes with multiple women. A different one this day, a different one that day. But we're socialists because of Bernie Sanders. And now we're socialists more so because of AOC, which is against money, power, and greed winning anything. Bistango is probably the most important bar for creating stronger kilometers, stronger DNA children. There's also the Boulder Act and Tempest Cellars, which is a wine bar. So if you want to age gap, go to Lower Post Street in Spokane, if you're a Spokaner. It's a great place to be. It's a great place to live. Uh, the weather's nice. There's some problems, but you see the same problems in Olympia, too, that you see here. The greedy little fuckboys, the, you know, the guys that say they're socialists, but they got open chicks, you know, giga wealth when it comes to women. The women give in to this wigger-ass dude broke greed. I'm just gonna, gonna act like them. I don't listen to their music, but I'll just say nigga, nigga, nigga until I have a girlfriend. Bitch, bitch, bitch. Nigga, nigga, nigga. Oh, bitch, bitch, bitch. I don't care what fucking color your skin is. I'll probably date you if I think you're attractive. But the point is, is um, one, if you want to age gap, go to Lower Post Street in Spokane. I'm here too, but I can't go in because I don't have an ID. I need $55 to get an ID card. I need one more project to get my ID. One more. Do the right thing here. Hook me up with a project. I'll have a hundred bucks in at this point. Then I can go to the Bistango and do the whole Gen X, Gen Z, age cap thing like the rest of you. But really, it just comes down to money, power, and greed, even though we're socialists, doesn't it? So, age cap all you want. We're still going to be preaching for this. Because we want female empowerment. We want socialism. We want worker solidarity. We want better wages for people. We want people to be treated fair and to have health care and education. When it comes right down to it, I don't like you very much. But I still want some money out of you. Give me a reason to like you. Give me this ID card so I can go find my girl after nine years alone. While well, y'all age gap with Gen X dudes at the Stango on Lower Post Street in Spokane. Go there. Find your love. And drink a nice martini on me. Because I can't afford love, I guess. you got to have a nice car or, or multiple girlfriends just to have one. Empowering greed. Taking the women away. Fuck to your pollution machine. We're socialists. Money and power and greed, Generation Z, fuck to your pollution machine, we're socialists, money and power and greed, taking the women away, Generation Z. Fuck to your pollution machine. We're socialists. Money and power and greed. Taking the women away. Generation Z. Fuck to your pollution machine. We're socialists.
I think this is kind of funny. Do you guys want to see how mean and scary I can look? And like, just as kind of a an experiment in, in the, uh, I don't know, a Dada experiment, maybe, or just, just a little bit of a routine to show you how scary I can be. I look scary anyway. I can, I can be scary. Kids, we are tired of your money, your power, and your greed winning over the hot little Gen Z chicks. This is about your dirty fucking umbrage. And it needs to end. Who am I? Your worst fucking enemy. Unless you give me that phone number. Hook it up. Or we are not friends. That's how scary I can be. Fuck you, capitalists. We are socialists. And that's how it would be if I had a major fucking meltdown. Fuck you! Evidence or fuck off! Atheism rules! Tired of greed. It just says Hase. It used to be the Chase Manhattan building. But it, it, I hope they never replace that fucking C either, because Hase. Let's see if I can zoom in a little. Hase sounds so much like waste, like money, an imaginary concept. Just this fairy tale, uh, fairy tale idea. These this, these streams of numbers on the screen sound just like haste, you know, like haste. But they couldn't even afford the fucking tea because, like, a Christian group probably ripped it off for the top of their fucking church. So it, it just says haste. It sounds so much like waste, like the capitalist ass system and the money, power, and greed system. You with your multiple ass girlfriends, Gen Z. You'll laugh at the fucking things that I say, but you never hook me up. You're useless and pitiful. I want a fucking girlfriend. I want some fucking pussy. I want to get married someday. But it's all about money, isn't it? So I hope they never utilize the money to fix that fucking thing. Because it's just going to take it away from poor people that work there. They'll probably, wait, they'll probably raise their wages. Uh, uh, or like the taxation on their wages to pay for that fucking C too, like the lowest paid workers, like the janitors and shit, and like the bank tellers at, at Haste, at, at Haste Manhattan, uh, just haste and waste, you know, they will, they, they'll replace it. Kind of like when you go to Rite Aid and you they beg you for money to help the poor, when the billionaires that own the corporation, Rite Aid, could just solve the fucking problem, they just make haste, you know what I mean? Like they make waste. And they ask the poor people, the customers that pay for the poor people, but they themselves never do it, so they just have haste. They, they've hastened the situation, and it just haste. So, like, never replace that fucking C. It just sounds like they're chasing money. They don't care about people, it just chase. The rat race of chase. Fuck them. Fuck you, Chase Manhattan, and your fucking Dead Sea. Because you're, you're, you're haste, and now you're just haste. Like a ghettoized version of haste. Fucking Chase. Each one of you probably has like seven girlfriends a week, like the fucking bums down here that never hook me up or laughing at my humor. Make some haste with Chase, which is now haste. Well, your girl doesn't care about you, Zoomers. She doesn't. The only thing, if she's with you right now, is she cares about your money, your power, and your greed. There's no fucking getting around it. You're a fucking generation that uses money to manipulate women just like everybody else. Power, like your youthful power, and your greed. Oh, you got seven girlfriends this week. You get new ones next week. She's a, a low-rent woman. She's, she's not a woman of quality. She doesn't care about anything. Women and uh, ladies, if you don't date under your economic class, all you do is care about money. If you only care about guys who got multiple girlfriends, you only care about greed. And if you only date dudes your own age, you only care about power because of their youthful energy and their bravado or whatever. Date me.
Or if you don't date me, at least go to like one of the age gap bars on Lower Post Street. All that shit is all about that generation gap. You don't care about anything. All you care about is money, power, and greed while we're being socialists. You're a bunch of fucking hypocrites. That's just fucking truth. If you don't date me, you're a fucking hypocrite. Give me your phone number. I'm not playing your little catfishing game. Fuck you. You either do it IRL or you're just a piece of shit generation. I hate it when you want to find a girl and somebody gives you some sort of vague answer. Like, I'm five years into this town. I don't really know it. I've had to experiment a lot. Nobody told me that Bistango was the age gap scene. Nobody told me about Lower Post Street or Cochinito, how they'll be older and be into Generation Z chicks. All I got the whole time I was here from everybody was, Way up, it's out there! That's the name of a little, like, free magazine you can get at the mall called Out There. So if anybody says to me, you're really out there, I take that as gaslighting and as an abuse. It's out there! See, that's the thing you kind of get from Christians is some kind of like hope-filled argument or some sort of like uh, bullshit thing like, you're really out there. So as an atheist, don't be like them. It's out there. The sky is blue. And the stars, where are they? They're up. Uh, where's the carrots in the field? Oh, you know, in the dirt. It's out there, derp to derp to derp. I hate that shit. The like, oh, just have a little bit of hope and believe and you'll find it. Dude, I'm looking for a specific location and then you come by with two women that you're not introducing me to or a hot chick and you just pause there. Like, she's just, like, yours, and you're flashing your wealth. You come to your, my door, and you introduce her to me uh, like she's your chick, not like she's my chick. You get real vague. You expect me to just expect to know what to do. You'll come by and, like, swoop two guys, and then you'll take one and just leave me stranded. And then when you're walking off, you don't say something like, come on, you're, you're invited. You just be like, oh, I'm going to doop to doop to do 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 I'm tired of your rudeness, Gen Z. You get all this fucking uh, uh, claim for being like this great generation of generosity. Prove it. Prove your generosity. What does out there mean? What party you go to? Where the house party at? What's your phone number? Something specific. You're just going to presume I'm retarded? No, give me a specific answer. The fact that I've had to do everything on my fucking own and rely on the community... Uh, By myself, without anybody really leading me to anything other than, like, established services. Oh, some bar. I should just presume. Oh, some house. I should just presume. Oh, I should presume what to do. I should just presume. You should presume that everybody's at 100%. I'd know what to do now, but I've done that through experimentation. Did Gen Z or Millennials help me with anything? Did Generation X? Did anybody? No. I had to fucking do it on my own. It, because I'm an atheist. Da, da, da. You treat me different because I'm an atheist. Da, da, da. No, you, you, you treat everybody, you should treat everybody equally. You're why I'm an atheist. What is an atheist? Someone who doesn't believe in God, period. Your people suck, God. They don't provide you any kind of specific answers. They're vague. This is why I'm an atheist, and I don't believe in you. You, Mr. Supposedly Sky Daddy Invisible, whatever the fuck you think you are up there. The invisible and the non-existent look very much alike. Christians, you're why I'm an atheist. You know how many times greed is mentioned in the Bible? 25. Look at you Christian billionaires as you fuck over the world. Greed is mentioned in the Bible 25 times. Look at you Christian millionaires in Congress that don't give us our stimulus check and we got to wait so long 
for this fourth motherfucker. While other countries have gotten one a month because they're reasonable. Just like Canada and, and fucking Thailand and Mexico and Western Europe and, and Japan. Uh, one a month. Greed is why I'm an atheist. 25 times in the fucking Bible greed is mentioned as a bad thing. Including Luke 12, 15. You're out there walking around, you Christians, with your multiple girlfriends, sometimes two to five at a time. Greed is why I'm an atheist. Greed is mentioned in the Bible 25 times. 25 motherfucking times as you withhold wealth, withhold love, withhold information, withhold girls. Greed is mentioned in the fucking Bible, buddy boy. Greed, woman. Greed. That is why I'm an atheist, because it's mentioned 25 times in the fucking Bible. In, in Luke 12, 15, in just one verse, I might actually do a video where I'm talking about all the verses in the Bible where they mention greed being a bad thing. 25 fucking times, and Christians are still fucking greedy. You're why I'm an atheist. You know another reason why I'm an atheist? Hypocrisy. You know how many times greed is mentioned in the Bible? Because I mentioned that in my last video. 25 times with you billionaires and millionaires in Congress. You billionaires telling the millionaires what to do. You millionaires in Congress, your greed. You trotting around multiple girlfriends. You withholding love and information where to find girls. Where I got to find it on my own for five years. Oh, I just, just presume to know. Fuck your greed! It's mentioned in the Bible 25 times. You're why I'm an atheist. Fuck your greed! It's mentioned in the Bible 25 times. Fuck you! How many times is hypocrisy mentioned in the Bible? 45! 45 fucking times! Hypocrites are condemned in the Bible as you try around your multiple greed of multiple women, of billionaires and millionaires controlling your life, not telling me anything, withholding information of where to find the chicks. You and your hypocrisy! 45 fucking times, Christians! Christians, you're gonna burn in hell! All of you are gonna burn in hell! And you're why I'm an atheist! You're gonna burn in hell! You're why I'm an atheist! You're why I'm gonna tell you what? I'm not gonna burn in hell! I have a better chance of getting into heaven than you Christians do! You hypocrites! You greed lovers! You're gonna burn in hell! You and your multiple fucking chicks, hypocrite! Green lover! Green lover! Green lover! Hypocrite! 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 25 times green is mentioned in the Bible. You know why I'm an atheist? 45 times hypocrisy! You're why I'm an atheist! See you in fucking hell, green lover! Generation C! So, matter Christians, you got a problem with pagan gods? Well, I'm here in Spokane with a pagan. Look at this Egyptian motherfucker. Give me some girls, you greedy motherfucker. Ah! 25 times greed is mentioned. Greedy Christian. Hypocrisy, 45 times. Look at me with this pagan god. Ah! This is why I'm an atheist. Your hypocrisy and greed, Christian! Look at that shit, that blood red sun. That, that, see, that's Christians, that's a fucking omen. That's the demon, that's Satan saying you're being all fucking hypocritical. Generation Z, fuck you. Look at, look at this blood red demon's sun. It's an omen. You trotting out your multiple girlfriends, Christians. You billionaires and millionaires withholding. Wealth and information, people. Look, blood red motherfucker up there. Demon son. Look at that. Demon ass son. An omen of shit. No, actually what that is is because of all the forest fires. Why well, they call it a bad omen is because of uh, fire and smoke. We've had one of the... Uh, Worst years ever. Last year was the worst year ever for uh, fire and smoke in the Spokane area in recorded history. But now that we have this year, it's the worst year for smoke in uh, in uh, Spokane County. It is pretty bad. It doesn't really affect the city much except for the smoke and the smog. 
Um, the reason is uh, uh, global warming, so we got to care about that shit. Maybe you should stop driving your fucking cars and pump it out shit with the factories, you greedy fucking Christians. See, that's the problem is you're, you're putting too much, uh, you're warming up the planet. We've had one of the hottest years, too, here in Spokane. It's reached almost 120. It's, it's supposed to reach like an Arizona temperatures next week, like 112. Uh, it's been real bad in Spokane. It's like 93 degrees. It's supposed to be 93 degrees, I think. It was 93 yesterday that I remember, or maybe 98, somewhere in that area. Um, like, uh, it was definitely 90 something. It was hot and I looked it up. It was 90 something. I can't remember what it was. So we got a lot of, and a lot of smoke in the air. So it's like super cloudy looking like real cloudy because of all the forest fires all around Spokane County and stuff. Um, and which causes it to be a, a demon sun that they used to call it back in the day before they knew what was going on back in the native American days. A demon sun is an interpretation. The, they'd mention that back in the olden days of like the medieval times, you know. The demon sun. Look at this motherfucking demon sun. Bad omen. Well, that that's because of the fucking fire and smoke. Smokey the bear would be upset with your global pollution. You, you fucking bullshit. Stop driving your cars! Get rid of the factory smoke. Stop driving your fucking pollution machines. Christians! We're gonna get more demon suns. We're gonna get more 90 fucking degree temperatures where it's just nothing but smog and soot. And you can't see anything in the sky. There's no stars that you can see because of all the pollution causing all the forest fires. And it's 93 degrees. That's some weird ass fucking weather. That's sketchy. Fuck that shit. I do like the warmth. I don't, I'm not so sure about the fucking smog, though. It's been real bad this year. Usually the forest fires don't blot out the, the sun to do stuff like this and blot out the stars until, like, September. And it's, it's been happening since, like, late July over here. It's weird. It's because of the fucking global climate change, global warming shit. What's the matter, Christians? You got a problem with pagan gods? Well, I'm here in Spokane with a pagan. Look at this Egyptian motherfucker. Give me some girls, you greedy motherfucker. Ah! 25 times greed is mentioned. Greedy Christian. Hypocrisy, 45 times. Look at me with this pagan god. Ah! This is why I'm an atheist. Your hypocrisy and greed, Christian! This is what you get when you go into an area and try to convert the natives to Christianity. You get motherfucking killed! Maybe you should stop trying to convert people to your religion, Monaghan! <laughs> Monaghan! Whatever the fuck your name is. Don't try to convert people to Christianity! Leave people the fuck alone! Are you gonna get fucking murdered by Africans? Quit trying to convert people. The atheists would like you to stop dying for your cause. Mana. Yeah, mana. Like laughter. Huh. <laughs> like laughter. Mana fan. <laughs> stop trying to convert people to your Christian pagan God, the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. That's three gods. That's, that's fucking paganism. Stop trying to convert people to your pagan God. All oh, these niggas will kill your ass. Yeah, we get it. I just got my uh, second Moderna shot. They, they didn't show up, so I had to go through the whole process of getting a second one. And then I finally just went to the Chaz Clinic. Now I'm fully vaccinated. Hooray! Uh, here's what I don't get. Most of you are for Bernie Sanders and AOC, so we're socialists, Gen Z. We're socialists. 
But then the money is still in the women. Gen Z, enough of your hypocrisy. We're socialists. And the money is still in the women. Hey, you say you're not classist because you're left wing. Well, I need $50 and that's the swing. I need to get an ID so I can get some drinks and find myself a Zoomer Bay to bleep. This tango is the hot scene for Gen X, Gen Z, older male spring autumn romances. So I need to get together with the other economic classes and tell this passes so I get a little bit of martini in me and maybe a little bleep 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 The slurry of middle-aged reproductive transport cells gives you a greater sense of well-being. How does it work? Well, my presumption would be that the high telomerase sperm which gives babies stronger DNA, stronger more tactile strands of DNA would have to pass through the uterine walls. Well, as the uterine walls does absorb and eliminate semen, it is easy enough to presume that this is going to happen with middle-aged men as well. So what happens is it passes through the bloodstream, which interacts with the antibodies, cranking up and elevating the wattage, the nanojoule wattage per second of the antibodies, allowing antibodies to detect pathogens from further away which would give you a greater sense of well-being because you have an improved immune system. Another thing, like fruits and vegetables and water, is going to have to pass through the elimination system, the kidneys. And in doing so, just like fruits and vegetables in cold water, it's going to elevate the metabolism, giving you more energy, which is what telomerase tends to do. It improves your DNA. So if it interacts with anything with DNA, it would logically improve that DNA, such as DNA in the antibodies in the blood and DNA in the kidneys. How does the telomeric sperm form? Well, it would be presumptive to say that it just happens magically, of course, but what likely happens is men experience a 1% drop in uh, testosterone when they hit the age of 40, which would give progesterone a greater ratio to testosterone which you would think would elevate the right supermodal gyrus because women have more empathy than men and have more progesterone, which makes sense because that's sort of the woman chemical, just like testosterone is the man chemical, even though both sexes do contain both chemicals because they're incremental in the sex drive. So knowing that, the, the elevated status, the hyper drive of the empathy gland would probably and most likely trigger the pituitary gland to go into overdrive. The pituitary gland controls the sex drive, so that would create longer telomeres on the chromosomes. So logically speaking, as men age, they lose testosterone, and if you don't build it back with pills, you gain more empathy, which makes you better in bed. There's all these studies that say that men are better in bed because they're more empathic when they're at an older age. There's also a lot of studies that say that high telomeric sperm will give you kids stronger DNA so long as the husband or the mate doesn't have Asperger's, um, autism, schizophrenia, or Marfan, which tends to happen in men that don't breed until they're older because men with these syndromes likely don't att attach to a mate or a wife until later in life. Because they have schizophrenia, they tend to be social outcasts, just like Marfan syndrome makes you a bit dorky. And autism can make you a bit dorky as well. So this high telom telomerase sperm has a dual effect of making you have greater well-being and also giving your baby stronger DNA. So likely, if you want a better mate, you're going to have someone that, that will give your kids stronger DNA as the woman, which would be women between 18 and 24. And now to this new science between uh, 35 and 55 years old and men. Luckily enough, I'm single and 41. Hey, ladies. Want to get a piece of sometimes Spokaners? Well, I'm really only into monogamy. Shucks, I know. People want to know what you could do to initiate an age gap relationship, especially when you're 40 and a guy. 
and you want to date younger women. Well, you just go up and you say, hey, I thought you were really beautiful, and I wanted to say, hi, my name is, followed by your first name. It works every time. It, it, they're that open-minded. You have to try to be chill about it and not stuttery. Um, but even if you're stuttery, they still think that that's cute. So just go ahead and be stuttery. It'll work. They'll reach out their hand as soon as you reach out your hand. And you'll think it'd be a handshake. But it'll be one of those things where you'll kiss her hand. Because she'll be like 21 and you'll be like 40 to 60. It works every time. They're that open-minded. If you come in more charming than dudes their age, like, hey, I need that bitch, well, it's an obvious thing where you're going to win the argument with her. You know what I mean? You charm her to death. You sweep her off her feet. You just come in like you're, you're a king and she's a queen. I'm going to do that as soon as I can. I need an ID card. So I need another $50 project. I got one yesterday where I earned 50 bucks by insulting a woman's cat. Yeah, I'm not kidding. Um, so any kind of $50 project that you want me to do that I'll do, I'll do it. I won't insult myself. I won't lie about my research. I won't do things that are racist, homophobic, or misogynistic unless there's really good reason for doing this. I won't use certain terminology. Um, so don't expect me to do something ableist or classist either. Like, oh, that bum peed on my sidewalk. Yeah, but what's the bum going to do about it? You know what I mean? Let me think about it. Send me the email, L-U-C-A-S-W-E-R-N-E-R-7-9, and I'll read it over and approve or disapprove of your idea. Because I need to get an ID card. I need five bucks more, but the projects I do are worth 50 bucks. So hook it up. When you approach a woman in public, you have to presume that you're attractive. So if anybody on the internet is telling you that you're unattractive or offline, like IRL is telling you you're unattractive, don't associate with these people because they'll get in your head. Just be like, fuck you and move on, you know what I mean? And if they don't move on, just don't associate with them. And if they harass you, call the cops. It's real easy. You can't just go in and approach... Like, you're not attractive. The easiest way is to just say, Hi, I thought you were very beautiful and wanted to introduce myself. My name's Lucas. You don't even have to show a lot of emotion. You can, though. You can show emotion or not, and it can work. They like it if you're real smooth. They like it if you're real clumsy. But as long as you're making the approach, and you have a little bit of self-confidence, and you comprehend what she's saying when you're having a conversation... And she comprehends what you're saying when having a conversation. You're golden. You don't have to listen to people that tell you you're a piece of shit. You don't have to. There's no law that says you have to even acknowledge that they're right or that they exist. There's no point to them. So just say they exist and say they're haters and move on. There's nothing you can really do about it. People are going to hate people who have self-confidence. That's just the way it is. If you have self-confidence or you're an actor or something or a persona over the internet, people are going to give you crap for this. And so you just might as well ignore the shitheads and move on. You're scaring the hell out of me, man. Everything that I do good, I try to do good.